dudes, and welcome back to the Bants. As always, I am your host, the Bants, and here we are. I hope you all are enjoying your weekend, all enjoying your Saturday, and of course, to hopefully go along with that, it is time for our second and final What's Happening in Fashion for the week, so let's just get right into it. And first up, as always, we have our headlines for the day. And in our first headline of the day, it was just recently announced that the Ermenia Gildo Zegna Group just bought a huge major stake in Tom Brown. And honestly, I can't say I'm too happy about it. So first off, who exactly is the Zegna Group? Well, the Zegna Group is a collection of brands, mostly eponymous brands under the same name, who mainly focus on, but are not limited to, men's classical wear, although much more on the tailored side, so you can kind of see the ties they would have to some brand like Tom Brown. And when I say they bought a major stake in Tom Brown, I'm not just talking like 51% or 60%, I'm talking they bought an 85% stake in Tom Brown. So yeah, they basically own it. And even though Ermine Jodo himself said he wanted to keep Tom Brown an independent label, he also stated that he does want to expand the brand into more markets and also give Tom the opportunity to use some of these Zeng Group's fabrics and manufacturing as well. And this kind of seems like a double-edged sword to me. Now the reason why I say this is because if some of you may remember, up until very recently, Tom Brown was really in charge of two separate brands. Not just his eponymous label, but also the Montclair Gomme Bleu line that he did in collaboration with Montclair, obviously. Of course, this collaboration ended when Montclair decided to move on into their next phase of collaborations, obviously being the Montclair Genius Collections. And so with that, we finally got to see Tom get a little bit of a break and focus more on his own line for once, which in my opinion, I thought was a very good thing for him just mainly for a creativity sake now that's not me saying he was doing a bad job during this time in fact it was quite the opposite while he was doing gum blue along with his own line he was still putting out some amazing work and some really amazing collections and pieces but even so you could definitely see that he was getting a little bit I don't want to say lackluster because I feel that's too harsh, but let's just go with lackluster in some of his runway shows and just having him get to pull back on Gone Blue really seemed to give him a little bit more fresh air and a little bit more room for creativity for future seasons of his own line. But now that we see the Zegna group wanting to expand Tom Brown further, it's a little bit worrying to me. Not because I don't think he can do it, obviously even if they expand the brand it's not going to be nearly as much work as it was controlling and creating for two separate brands brands, but at the same time, I don't like the idea of seeing an eponymous label run by somebody other than the actual designer who made it. Really when it comes down to it, I guess, I really just don't want to see another Helmet Lang or Anne de Moulin Meester situation because as far as the creatives in this industry go, Tom Brown is definitely up there and I really don't want to see him leaving fashion anytime soon. But once again, as always, as unfortunate as it is, I guess we'll just have to wait and see exactly how this all pans out in the future. Then in our second headline of the day, honestly, this is really one of the dumbest things I have read in a very, very long time. Quartzy put out an article basically going over this idea of how people nowadays are buying clothes, using them for Instagram pics, and then just immediately returning them. So let's talk about it. So let's go over the hard facts first, shall we? Basically, the credit card company Barclay Card did a survey of roughly just a little bit over 2,000 people, and of these 2,000 people, around 10% admitted to buying clothes solely for social media or more specifically, Instagram photos. 
What the fuck is wrong with you people? The other two surprising facts about this is that the majority age group who does this sort of thing actually falls in the 35 to 44 range. So suck my dick Gen Xers, you can't blame the millennials for this one. Though obviously teens weren't included in this survey because obviously teenagers for the most part can't have credit cards. And that it was more likely for men to do this rather than women, although both genders are still guilty of doing this. And really, this just kind of blows my mind. But then again, this is also coming from somebody who was much more interested in fashion than the normal person. Sure, I completely understand that not everybody out there is going to be looking for specific designers or specific aesthetics or ethical traits or pretty much anything that evolves around the fashion bubble. But even so, I just cannot wrap my head around this idea of trying to put up a facade of something that you're not. And don't get me wrong, I understand that fashion isn't always necessarily the easiest thing to get into, and there are plenty of companies out there that are actually thriving off of this. I mean, you have everything from those monthly box subscriptions, which even though yes, in my opinion, are incredibly lazy and usually very lackluster in their creativity, at least you're getting something new out of it. And then there are companies out there like Rent the Runway, which let you pick and choose different styles or pieces from specific collections, which also give you that access to a ever-revolving wardrobe, if you so please. But do you know what the one key difference is between the subscription boxes and renting programs, as opposed to just buying and returning product? It's that even for as much as I dislike the former, at least somebody is getting paid out of it. If you're just picking up a piece of clothing, throwing a photo of it up on Instagram and then immediately returning it, you're really wasting the money, time, and effort of somebody who's really just trying to make a living. And don't even try and give me this big spiel of, oh, these are major companies and conglomerates and yada yada. That's not what this is about, because if this continues with those large companies, it will just trickle down to the smaller ones, and then those companies are really fucked. Like just if a company has a try before you buy policy, or a 30 day money back guarantee, doesn't mean you should be abusing that system. Especially, and I mean especially if you're trying to do this mainly to try and be something that you're not. Whether that's be rich, or fashionable, or famous, or whatever. All it really ends up making you look like is a piece of shit. Now obviously there are many other factors at play here well outside the realms of fashion. More so in just the psychology behind social media and what it's done to our society and such. But I've already talked about this long enough so let's just move on. What do you guys think about all this? Are you as angry as I am about the return system? Do you prefer that renting system that I also talked about? Or are you actually for it? Whatever your opinion, feel free to let me know. I'd love to know what all of you guys think about this. But now, with all that said and done, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, one of my personal favorites, artist Ryan McGinnis, just showed off some photos from his newest exhibit, current going on in Hong Kong and even though these aren't necessarily his greatest works he did also release a 100% and 400% bare brick to go along with this which believe me more than makes up for this so if you want an introduction to the artist or want to see just some of his works or even are interested in the bare brick I would definitely check all this out then kinfolk 90 got together with artist Patrick Hanley to release a collaboration of some hand-painted jackets and truthfully I think he did an amazing job here letting his style really come through in some of these paintings on some of these pieces and really when it comes down to it it's just super refreshing to see somebody doing something on a jacket that isn't flowers fucking a rapper, a Nickelodeon cartoon, or some Warren Lotus bullshit. 
And lastly, one of the masters himself, Jose Parla, showed off some of his newest works from his recent London exhibition. And these are just phenomenal. Great use of color, different styles, mediums, and textures. And if you are even the slightest fan of abstract art, definitely worth checking out. All right, and now moving back into our fashion section for the day. First up, a brand Pleasures showed off their fall winter 2018 lookbook and it just sucks and I know some of you might be thinking I'm a little bit harsh here on pleasures but nah go take a look through this lookbook and then we'll talk if you've been following pleasures for any semblance of time you might be confused looking this over you might think that I linked an older collection because you've seen a lot of these pieces before that's the problem. Now, this is by no means a new thing for them, as I've talked about many times before in many of their previous little books. The fact of the matter is, is that Pleasures just really takes their designs and graphics and just beats them to death over and over and over again through every fucking season and every fucking lookbook it's just the same fucking shit and i'm not even talking on the level of the brand that must no longer be named where they just keep copying silhouettes nah pleasure says fuck that i'm literally just going to take the same exact thing and just re-release it and call it a new season and it almost seems like the more that I talk and shit talk to them about it, the more they just end up doing it because fuck it, why not? Let's just all be awake NYC and just be the laziest fucking brand on the planet. Really, the only silver lining to this whole collection is this plaid here, which still is nothing more than a uniform experiment ripoff anyway. And even besides that point, it's already sold out because Go figure, it's the only good piece in this entire fucking collection. So, really when it comes down to it, fuck this lookbook and fuck this brand. And speaking of lackluster brands, let's talk about the end of summer lookbook from Stray Rats as well, shall we? I mean, what the fuck happened to this brand? I mean, this isn't one of those brands that I've followed a lot because really when it comes to the much more newer generation of streetwear, it's mostly shit to begin with. No offense to any of you younger viewers out here. But wasn't this brand just getting a load of hype and weren't just a ton of people wearing this? And then this lookbook rolls out. I always thought that Stray Rats was trying to be a streetwear brand, not a t-shirt line, but guess what? It's another fucking t-shirt line. And surprise, surprise, not a very creative one at that either. The only really good piece in this entire collection is Jesus holding the stray rat as opposed to the lost lamb. And honestly, even I can admit that this is pretty funny. It's a good graphic and definitely worth picking up if you still can. But as far as the rest of this collection goes, it's just fucking trash. I mean, just really really utter garbage. But once again, this crotchety old man is going to sound like a broken record saying this, but really, if you don't have the creativity to continue even so much as a t-shirt line, let alone an entire streetwear brand, just don't fucking waste your time or ours. It's really not worth it. And finally, let's move on to our articles for the day. And first up, Grail did another nice history of, this time on legendary streetwear brand Fucked. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the brand, a little bit more of their history, I definitely check this out. And speaking of Rent the Runway, which we talked about in our second headline of the day, Rico just put out a nice little tidbit about the brand and how they've actually secured some more funding for their cause and where they're planning to go next with it. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that brand, I definitely read this as well. And lastly, CNBC did a nice little write-up slash overview on up-and-coming brand Black Lapel, which is a completely online customizable suit tailoring service which allows you to get your own custom suit after getting your own measurements all done via the web and really it's an interesting concept and 
really goes to help more toward that customization we've been seeing more and more nowadays. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this formal wear, I definitely check this out as well. All right, guys, and with that, we've once again reached the end of our second and final whiff for the week. I hope you all have enjoyed. And as always, if you want to read any of the articles I talked about today or see some more images from lookbooks I wasn't able to include, I've linked everything in the description down below. And if you are new here, then welcome once again to the channel. We do these What's Happening in Fashion videos twice a week at the beginning and end of the week, plus another occasional video here or there. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you just have any questions, comments, concerns, or even just want to talk about fashion at all, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I am always willing to talk fashion. And thank you all once again for watching these videos and supporting my content. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend ahead of you. And as always, until next time.